Hey, hello, Stephen here. Another nice day today. So I thought I would bring you a review of the Seastar S50 robotic imaging telescope. So these are very popular at the moment. They've been selling very quickly. I got one at the start of the observing season and therefore I've been using it all winter. So I thought I had accumulated enough time on the unit to express my opinion and share it. So hopefully you find this useful. So just some quick specs on this unit. Um, it has a 50 millimeter objective aperture. It currently has a solar filter applied, uh, which is free, comes with the unit. Um, so in terms of live observing, 50 millimeters is not massive. It's like a typical binocular objective size. But you've got to remember that this unit, um, the kind of magic's in the software. It's gathering light in 10 second bundles and it's integrating. So when you take the integration and stacking, which is all automatic on this unit, uh, you've actually got an aperture which is significantly larger than that. But it's also worth saying that for views of the moon, a 50 mil like this is decent. And in fact, this does deliver really nice images of the moon. Not as high a resolution as you're going to see through your backyard telescope, but pretty good. For planets, however, um, it's not going to deliver excellent views. So most planets in this will resolve as kind of discs with no detail. I had to really tune in um, the sort of light levels and the focus um, with Jupiter and I could just make out uh, fairly poorly resolved bands. So it's not going to give you spectacular views of the planet. So just, just remember that. Now, um, what does it come with? Well, this tripod doesn't come with a base package. This is my own heavy duty tripod. And I like to get the unit up off the ground because the tripod it comes with is rather small. Uh, there it is there. That said, um, I actually think this is a really nice tripod. It's lightweight. You can deploy it really quickly and it fits in this nice case, which also comes with a package. So as an overall package, um, it's really impressive good value for money. So you get this, you get the tripod, you get the solar filter, pretty much everything you need. To use it all you need is a phone or a tablet. So I was looking at the sun, I'm not sure what's happened to that. I'll talk about the software in a minute. Um, but yeah, the package is really impressive. Um, but if you do um, have a bigger tripod, I would definitely be mounting it and getting it up high or put it on a table like this, something sturdy, um, just so that you increase the kind of size of your horizon. So what about actual use and image quality and so on? Well, let me explain why I bought this, because it might be a little different from the average use case. Um, so I run public outreach astronomy up here in the Highlands. Um, I do private tours and I also run events for the public up at Abrican Forest. Initially I thought this would be a great piece of kit to deploy during the big Abrican sessions where we might have you know 60 to 90 people. I thought we could be looking at galaxies and so on. And one issue arises here. The software on this unit is kind of slow, it's glitchy and it crashes quite often. Now, I have an, I kind of had an Android set up, um, so if you're on iOS that might be different for you, but um, I've been a little bit disappointed with the software implementation. Um, it can be a little bit jangly, uh, and for that reason I haven't really used it in big outreach events um, because I want things to run smoothly. But I have used it in my van tours when I've maybe got a couple and it's more relaxed and we've got a couple of hours. Uh, in fact, I had this out with a recent van tour with a German couple. So we were doing naked eye stargazing and then I set this up and it got brilliant views of M81, M82. 
which are two galaxies in Urza Major. Sure, many of you are aware of those two lovely targets. So that segues nicely now onto the quality of images. I've already talked about the planets, which are a bit of a thumbs down. The moon is a thumbs up, but a double thumbs up is this unit's ability to resolve faint dark sky and deep sky objects, nebulae, galaxies, globular clusters, open star clusters. I was completely blown away by the quality of the images this thing captures. So for example, Andromeda. You point this at Andromeda and it will resolve the bright core and lots of dust lanes extending out within about two minutes. Amazing. Uh, if you leave it longer, you're just going to get more and more detail. Uh, something like a 30 minute um, accumulation time. You're going to get stunning views. Um, M81, M82, those galaxies will resolve with considerable detail within two to three minutes. Um, again, I was really stunned at that. Um, the quality is excellent. So, again, if you've got time, if you've got a relaxed setup, perhaps you're an individual just wanting to use it to capture nice images, I think you're going to absolutely love this telescope. Um, the images you're going to get, you're going to be able to show off on social media. Excellent. And also, um, you don't have to be put off if you're in light polluted skies. So one thing I haven't mentioned on the spec is this unit has automatic filter deployment. So it has a basic IR cut and it has an excellent light pollution filter, which it will deploy automatically depending on the target that you select. And um, yeah, it doesn't seem to matter if you're under light polluted skies, you will capture brilliant images. Um, I suppose taking it to a dark sky environment is just going to speed up your integration times. You're going to get better images quicker and probably a bit more contrast. But yeah, urbanites uh, do not be dissuaded from buying this unit. It's excellent and it's going to save you potentially hundreds or thousands of pounds um, in equipment if you're just wanting to capture, you know, decent images. Uh, in no way am I suggesting that this is going to trump dedicated setups. And I'm not really an astrophotographer, so I'm not going to go near that debate. But for just, you know, semi-live viewing and, you know, reasonable images over short time scales, you're going to really enjoy using this telescope. So there we go. Um, that's my review. Um, so thumbs up from me. I recommend it. Um, the price is excellent. Um, for beginners and seasoned users, you're going to love the versatility of this unit. The software keeps getting improved. So again, that's my only negative. Just be prepared for the odd crash the odd freeze, um, but if you can overlook that and you've got a decent amount of time, you're going to have lots of fun with this telescope. So I heartily recommend the Seastar S50. Thank you very much for watching and listening.